Wow, I'm bright. My face is so bright today. But how? How do I block the light? What the heck, I'm just gonna roll with it. Today I'm going to talk to you about finding your art style. So you claim you can help me find my art style. That's very bold of you. Do you even have your art style figured out yet? No. Your art style can be ever changing and growing. It's sort of like your branding as an artist. You can stick with one, but you don't have to. If you're watching this, you might think that you don't have an art style and maybe don't know how to find one, or maybe you're not happy with the one you've got. But fear not, we're going to switch on our full art nerd mode. If you're a person with full modes like art nerd, ultra introvert and bundled mess of social anxieties, uh, join the club and subscribe. <laughs> Wow, I, I'm pretty sure that was my weirdest one yet. Today I'm going to do some eye studies and talk a little bit about my thoughts on art style. First, what is an art style? Like I said before, it's part of your branding as an artist. Now, do you really need a branding? No, but if your goal is to get known or make art pay your bills, uh, it's probably a good idea to focus on and get really good at a certain style. It's sort of like with your personality. You can try to please everyone in everything you do and everyone will probably think that you're a neat person. But if you are yourself to the fullest, sure some people might like you less, but the people who dig your kind of personality will love you even more. Uh, I get it though, it's, it's pretty hard. I know, I'm slowly coming out of my bubble too. I hope you appreciate that I'm working on unleashing my full weirdness on y'all. <laughs> y'all is a great word. Uh, for real though, I, I've had that fear of not being liked, even in my art. Especially when I started digital painting and created this channel. I knew that some fine art folks would look down at what I did, but it made me really happy. Making videos makes me really happy, as do painting sparkly ladies and experimenting while I try to wrap my head around the fundamentals. And that is my first tip to find your art style. Experiment with different art styles. For example, I feel like my art style is way neater and more polished than I want it to be. I like looking at more painterly art where the brush strokes are less blended but so deliberate. Just put where they need to be. So today I brought out the old acrylic paints that I have neglected for, well, over a year now and I decided to have a go at some studies. My goal for this painting session was to be expressive and deliberate with my brush strokes, to get that kind of painterly, messy look. That's the kind of art I love to look at, so that's what I want to bring into my own art style. And a tip that's related to that but not completely the same, that is to go out on inspiration hunts for new styles. I always say referencing is important, and not just for looking at form and anatomy and so on, but as an inspiration for new elements to bring into your style. There's so much amazing art out there, and can you believe we walk around with all that in our pockets? Some amazing places to find cool art is of course social media like Instagram and YouTube. Pinterest is also a really really cool place. But don't forget your local treasures like art galleries or books at your local library. I personally have a love for hunting down art books at thrift shops. I found some amazing ones for basically nothing. It's really nice to just be able to pick one out of my bookshelf and flip through for inspiration. Which leads me to my next point. Your art style is a choice, not something you just have. Some of you might think that that is something obvious, but I promise you to a lot of you out there that might come as a surprise. Especially since you always hear the term like finding your art style or like what is your art style and that's probably not something that you even think about in the beginning, you know? When you first start out, it seems like your hands just do things automatically and like you have no way of changing how it looks your style kind of just happens, but I promise you, if you consistently work with the intention to change something, you will change it. A good way of bringing elements you love into your own art is to make studies with intention, like the one I'm doing today. 
My intention is to blend less and be mindful with my brush strokes. But you can also do master studies. A master study is when you take the painting of a master or someone you look up to and basically copy it. <laughs> copy their brush strokes, copy their way of used color, the line work, everything. Make it as close as possible. It can take a long time to figure out how someone managed to do a certain technique, but it's definitely worth the trouble. And you might stumble on some really cool techniques, even if you didn't look for them. Now, this is probably not something you want to sell or use commercially in any way, especially if you're copying a contemporary artist. This is just for you. Just a way for you to learn by figuring out how they did it. Doing art just for the sake of practice can be tedious, but it's worth it. <laughs> if you can make art that you're never going to show to others, you can leave a lot of room for experimenting and failing. <laughs> and I've said it before and I'll say it again, getting better at art means failing on a regular basis. A tip I just have to include, although it's not mine, is adopting art parents. This is something I heard on The Draftsman, a podcast over at the channel Proko, which is an amazing place to learn cool stuff. In season 1 episode 5 uh, of The Draftsman podcast, they talk about adopting a couple of art parents that you basically inherit elements from. It's really an awesome podcast and a great episode, so I'll link it below if you want to check it out. They have quite a lot to say about why and how you should do it, uh, but the essence of it is to find masters you really love and then study the fluff out of their work. In a later episode, they also mention that you should find artists from at least 100 years back, so that can be worth thinking about too. And that actually leads me to the very last tip of today, and that is learning fundamentals will improve your art no matter what style you want to do. I mean, I mean, if, if you're 1000% sure you only want to draw, say, chibi characters for the rest of your life, just as an example, um, then I guess it could be a good idea to only practice that. Uh, but in any other scenario, even if you like anime or an exaggerated cartoon style, understanding fundamentals, gesture and anatomy will be incredibly helpful for you in the long run. Now art is a deep, deep rabbit hole and one of those things where you find that the more you learn, the more you realize how little you actually know. Uh, but if you keep in mind how much good all the practice will do you, it will make it fun to learn. I absolutely love and always recommend gesture drawing, preferably from life, but if you can't get live classes or a friend to help you out, I'll put some links in the descriptions with some more info. And I'll also leave uh, a link to my Pinterest board with my eye references. I always make tons of Pinterest boards for everything I do, it's so much fun. If you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, this very video is actually uploaded in real time. So check that out if that's something that interests you. And in any other case, I really, really want to thank you for just watching my videos. As well as commenting, of course, it really helps us smaller creators. So thank you to this week's commenter, JM Art with Detail. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you next time.